Hello. It's me tonight instead of Charlie introducing everybody. Um, unfortunately, Charlie is not here with us, but she is always here in spirit. We love you very much. Um, instead, you have me doing an introduction. So it's it's great to be back because I couldn't make it last week. I think I've upset the technology gods, but we're going good for now. Um, but enough about me. Let's talk to my wonderful friends and players here and see how they're feeling about tonight. Uh, let's start with Shauna. How are you doing? Hey. Doing good. I'm just excited to play and hopefully release Judge Reinhold from whatever um, containment he's in right now. I'm going to save him. <laughs> also, I'm glad we have Judge Tetley with us. You have Judge Tetley! Oh, <laughs> I, I haven't seen that Tetley for ages. <laughs> no, I just, I'm totally like, oh, where's that? And I was like, ah, yes, it's here. <laughs> And moving on to our favorite chimp judge. How you doing, Zippy? I am doing pretty good. Uh, I'm going to just kill Baldy McGrump Pants today. That's, that's my main goal. <laughs> totally killed my pinkies and used them as as a, uh, as a warning. a decoration. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm just, you know, I, I hope that uh he's just not standing out in the open having a nice cup of tea because i might just walk up to him and blow his brains out it's, it's okay it's fine greece is just on the war path and I, he's I'm small looking and he's a this. chimp <laughs> and speaking of people that might be on the war path we have travis who is playing judge reinhold how is it going it's going good i did the tunnel and I managed not to shit it up. So I'm on a, I'm on, <laughs> I've achieved a moment of what runners, I believe, call a moment of clarity. And um, I'm very excited to, I just thought what Charlie did last week was brilliant because she's brilliant and uh, it was a great, not only a twist, but a great way to twist the knife. So uh, I can't wait to see what happens to Judge Reinhold. Let's get it on. I just have to say that I was watching last week, even though I couldn't get my computer to work, I was on my phone watching. And um, it's like Charlie was in my brain. He's like, she's done all of the things I was going to do. How did she know this? So Charlie's a wizard, confirmed. And speaking of people who are wizards, our cook and explosives wizard. How are you doing, Cleric? I am, I'm doing all right today. I'm hanging in there. Um taking a deep breath getting through it um hi everybody um i think grease is gonna be the word today because grease is always the word and uh it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be interesting and i'm really looking talent i think is really looking forward to going on the warpath with fremont i'm feeling this is gonna get interesting might want to call this assault on the iso 59. Ooh. I can't wait to see what you guys do because I've I've watched last week's episode. I was obviously watching live, and it's gonna be fun. I think we do have some sponsor stuff that Charlie normally does, but I'm gonna do my best. So, um, our the, what we're using tonight to roll some dice is Fantasy Grounds, which is a great software for um, all of your gaming needs to do all your campaigns and your character sheets and rolling dice when you're playing across the internet. Um, I also believe that we are doing wild magic surges. Um, I'm sure somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. There we go. Mod.bot has got it up there. Um, and I think there is normally past Charlie to tell us about a sponsor video. If I've got that before we begin today's show, I would like to take some time to remind you about our sponsors. Fantasy Grounds are virtual tabletop of choice. All of the beautiful maps and roles you see tonight are done using Fantasy Grounds, which you can try for free at fantasygrounds.com. You can also get all of your miniatures from Wayland Games. Go to waylandgames.co.uk and get yourself a huge range of D&D, Warhammer and 40k minis for up to 20% off regular retail price and Tabletop Loot, who sell incredible dice. Go and check them out at tabletoploot.com. And then improvise. 
So I think we are back from past Charlie telling us about all of the wonderful sponsors here on Encounter Roleplay. As you can tell, I have learned from her and I'm a professional. <laughs> so I think we are going to jump straight in. And I want to go around quickly because I wasn't here last week and just remind myself and everybody watching where our judges are at at the moment and what their next steps are. And I want to jump straight to Greece, first of all, who is on the warpath. Hold up, I believe, in your little hidey hole HQ after having seen Slip be shot and have a bunch of people throwing a bunch of awful things at you, f trying to follow you and get rid of Marlon Brando. Yep. Yep. Um, he's just. Uh, okay, so what's the time frame, Ben? from last episode to now? I am going to say it's probably been a couple of hours. I want to jump straight straight back into here because I like okay. the terrible predicament you're all in. <laughs> um, Grease goes back to his hideout. He uh, unloads a clip into the wall, gets out his frustration, and then he goes and he grabs his judge shoulder pads and he places them on his, his duster he's been wearing and he heads out onto the street and he every uh, criminal he comes up against he places the gun to their temple and asks where's the anti-militia okay and you you fasten these to your, your duster and it looks slightly odd and it takes people a moment or two to realize quite what it is that adorns your shoulders and it's only once you're close enough to put the gun to their head that they realize what they are and most some people swear they don't know there are a few who simply say the upper floors where well, they always are on the upper floors what do you do with and he's gonna people? keep he, well, the ones that, you know, he's just using it to scare. He lets him go, and he's going to continue this interrogation path until he gets to the elevator, uh, in which he's going to try to go up to... ISO 59 is where he was going to last episode, so that's where he's going to assume the anti-militia is. Okay. Um, remind me, Talon, have you got the elevator working or have you still locked it off? It is locked off, I believe. I and, uh, think, didn't you open the support hatches? Like Yes, the support hatches are open, but the um, elevator itself is locked off to uh, level 25 and well, yeah. where the refuge is. And the stairwells are also... Um, the doors have been jimmied okay so, so you're going to be climbing climbing up then grease up the through the support hatch up the cables that's the yeah and that and that's fine i'm a i'm a chimp i'm a good climber okay you start climbing your way up to iso 59 the locked off level that is the home of the cage vipers and a number of other people as well who are unfortunate enough to be there when this shutdown procedure went wrong leaving them trapped and isolated Speaking of people who are trapped and isolated, Judge Reinhold, you are standing with a, I believe, a psychic axe in your hand. This desiccated corpse at your feet. As you exit that room and find yourself face to face with this kind of warehouse within this mega city block. You've heard no voice since you were spoken to last it's quiet eerie there has been no one else around just silence occasionally you hear you swear you hear bird song but before you can really focus in on it it's gone again like whispers that are teasing you from somewhere maybe in the back of your mind or somewhere just out of sight just around a corner or behind a door but this is where you stand. Yeah. 
Got the axe. Well, <sighs> um, so big warehouse, uh, full of stuff or empty? Um, so as you go through it, again, it's very much like the arcade in that this warehouse has been made up of what probably once would have been apartments that have been knocked through. You can see where bits of the wall aren't original to this building. They have been added in or perhaps replaced walls that were already here. Um, it's mostly empty. It's not too vast. It's the size of maybe three or four apartments, including the living areas, the bedrooms, what would have been bathrooms. So not mm -hmm. so far that it disappears out of sight at the other end, but still quite large for somewhere so empty. There are some boxes stacked up um, in one side of the room, these kind of wooden uh, makeshift crates that look like they've been made out of scrap debris. Um, there is another device similar to the one that held you in the room that you awoke in, um, in the center of this room. You can see in front okay. of this, there is a chair. Oh, right, I'm going to. OK, so Reinhold has gone through extensive training and conditioning to get a hold of himself during moments like these. And so far, he's done kind of a shit job. But as I step towards this chair and examine it, uh, I'm going to take some deep breaths and steal himself and uh, casting empathy it says no action is required i can automatically sense strong emotions in others within 30 feet so i want to kind of turn that on really quick and see if there's anybody nearby me freaking out uh, or if i can pick up on anybody and then as i approach the chair i kind of like want to dip my head pinch my temple and do sense psionics and for two and i've done my my psi points roll at 27 uh, so i sense the presence of psionics within 20 feet of me plus five feet per additional uh pp so i'm gonna spend four and so within 30 feet psi i'm sensing for psionics and i'm sensing for strong emotions and uh trying to calm myself down Okay, I have to ask before I answer your questions for that. How does Reinhold feel right now, as you're in this room and you're looking at this device, almost identical to the one that held you, and clearly a chair that has been used to observe somebody in this device? He's absolutely piss furious. Uh, he's never been um, attacked so effectively uh, since whatever horrible training you know they put these 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 particularly clones through i would imagine and uh and so like i don't think he's ever been this angry and he's like you know this is a guy who meditates twice a day who's who's very you know to, who so far has been very together and very centered and then this person this entity whatever just put a truck right through that and he's had his big fat freak out get to do a big jump with his axe and have a whole thing and now that he's seeing this thing and it's kind of quiet around him, he's going to do what he can to center himself. Okay. As you reach out with the empathy, you do feel something. Rage. Burning. Rage. Radiating from that point in the room. From that crossbar from and then there's something else behind the rage which is so piercing it's almost like it blinds you there is a calm an amusement almost a patience and you open your eyes again and you're looking at a crossbar and you're looking at an empty chair and as you put out um that secondary kind of psionic wave to sense anyone else like you in this vicinity you feel a presence and it's oppressive it's like having it's like waking up from sleep paralysis and having that crushing on your chest 
and it's so strong stronger than anything you have ever felt i need you to make me a will test please and if you have composure you can add that to it as you right, try cool. to center okay. yourself among this yes. these conflicting feelings i do not have composure my will is three and my fantasy grounds do you have meditation i have a one in meditation you can have meditation all right so that's four and someday fantasy grounds aha oh my. <laughs> yeah you may have to roll it uh sure how many that. dice am i rolling four four 16 okay you focus in on this you try to stop it's hard you you've had the training to stop the bleed of emotions that you can pick up washing over into you and as you feel that cascade hit as you try to separate your feelings from these outer ones you can push away the calm the patience that's not yours but the rage the rage is yours radiating from elsewhere in this room back to you like a strange reflection you center yourself you try to bring yourself back to you away from the room away from that horrible oppressive presence and the third eye opens first before your other two and there you are strapped to the crossbar in the middle of the room the chair in front of you is now occupied by a woman you can tell she's tall from her height in the chair and she has long hair with those tips that you've seen before and she sits laid back radiating calm curiosity as she looks at you says hmm hello reinhold I told you what I would do. I'm going to open up your mind and I'm going to scoop it out like a melon. You could do that. Yes. I'm more interested in your mind, though. Don't worry, I don't want to scoop it out like a melon. I think you're too focused in here. I don't think you're focused enough on what your friends, your fellow judges might be doing. It's a dangerous time for Freedom Falls. Why, only a few hours ago there was gunfire, explosions, attacks. Perhaps you should cast your mind out to them. Perhaps you should cast your mind out to those who would do them harm. Perhaps you can help them, Reinhold. Perhaps, seem to perhaps, perhaps. You seem to have grown stronger since you've been here in my little she kind of looks around you don't you can't tell what she's looking at there's nothing else here but she looks as if she's looking at something with a look of being pleased the same way that someone might observe something they were proud of and she kind of looks around before the eyes dart back to you and you notice she doesn't look you in your two eyes she's looking you in the third eye perhaps you should cast your mind out to those who would do them harm. Perhaps you can warn your friends. You have tried to contact them. I can feel it, Reinhold. Don't be so selfish. I haven't harmed you yet. Close your eyes. Focus. And she just smiles. And her, her body is oddly still as she sits relaxed in this chair. And it's only really the head and the neck that twist. You're distracting me, devil. You're trying to get me to get away from here to think about something other than here. When I finally got you right where I want you, right across from me, my judge friends can handle themselves. Nothing a few bullets can't fix. 
But you, you're the big fish, aren't you? You've got something really cozy down here. Oh, and you here like I it think very it's much. Better. I like my little playground. I like my little bird cage. Although I would really suggest looking outwards before your friend. And you see she focuses for a moment. Small, furry, chimp. Yes. He's on his way and he's going to meet a terrible... Terrible. And you can see the look on her face. There is a genuine kind of... Not quite disgust, but uncomfortableness. As she focuses somewhere past your shoulder. It's a shame if you could only look outwards, if you could only not focus on yourself for a moment, Reinhold, you might help. Ah, uh, well. You're not being very interesting just looking in here. I prefer you when you're interesting. And again, there's a sense that she relaxes back in this chair without really moving. It's like you can sense the emotion that she has as it kind of breaks the boundaries between your emotions and what you can sense. Greece is one smart ape and a trained judge. And he has a plan. You're trying to get me to send my mind elsewhere. You You're trying to sneak in back? the back door again. Oh, can I? Oh, I'm already in the back door. Judge Reinhold. Just look down. I'll look down. i look down. And as you turn your head down, you're looking at the floor. And at first you think, why? And then you realize there's no shadow from the chair in front where the woman would be sat. There's no straps holding your legs. And as you look up, confused, you're just standing with your arms wide, exactly in the spot that you were, with the crossbar in the centre of the room. And okay, just a so voice. I can she, send... Just the voice of, be interesting. You're more powerful when you're interesting. <laughs> and the voice kind of fades somewhere and it's hard to tell if it's in the room or in the back of your mind or again off in some corridor behind you it's very disorientating being unable to differentiate it so i can send telepathic messages as a free action to other intelligent creatures with whom i've spent time so i will message greece and, you know, it's got to be, it's short. So it's like, Greece, I'm stuck. I'm captured. Be careful now. And Judge Greece, as you're climbing hand over hand, foot over foot up these cables, which is no real trouble for you. It doesn't exert a lot of your energy. You're used to doing this. There's a sound in the back of your mind. Or is it coming from somewhere below? It's Reinhold's voice. As you hear that message, as you feel it bouncing around on the inside of your mind, like you can hear it through headphones. Try class. You. How dare you? Yes, it's me. Where are you? I have absolutely no idea. I'm tied up and I'm okay. being taunted somehow. What the hell are you doing? I'm that even the bad guys. Bullet. Putting a bullet in the anti-malicious head. Grease. Are you yeah. sure you know what you're doing? Nope. nope. They don't. But they, but they killed, killed a couple, couple of my guys. guys. So? so? 
I'm gonna put a bullet. That's what a chimp would do. Chimp would do. And you're Reinhold, goddamn right. As you're listening here, and you don't hear this grease, but Reinhold, you do in the back of your mind as the you could cast your eye out. You could warn him. You could give him the upper hand, Reinhold. Be interesting. All right. Why not? I, I'll, I'll send my mind over there and try to see what Greece is doing. Okay. Because I need to know whether or not what he's doing is a is a terrible idea because I'm not convinced that she's trying to distract me from letting him cut off the head of the anti-militia. So I, I'll, I want to see what Greece is up to. Okay. Make me a, uh, a side check then. And if you have, um, uh, Anything that you think would help in kind of uh, picking up what's going on around you. So um, telepathy could be useful or insight. Anything along those lines. As a matter of fact, I do have insight. And thanks to the marvelous voters of this marvelous chat i've got a six side baby oh yeah you better watch your shit uh fantasy grounds is loading here all right here we go so size six you said i could use insight and telepathy insight or telepathy or telepathy how dare you all right i'm gonna take insight and yeah. telepathy oh <laughs> only uh i well i got a big i got a high insight so let's see six seven eight nine all right, here we go. I'm going to roll my sigh. Uh, oh, God. Wait, no. No, oh, Fantasy Grounds. I'm learning how to use you. All right, here we um. go. <laughs> Five, uh... six, seven, eight, nine. So. Uh, five, six, six, seven, eight, nine, eight, nine, ten, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, sixteen, twenty-one, twenty-five, twenty-nine, thirty-three. 16, 21, 25, 29, 33. Very good. Virginia with the head mount, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What the players can't do, the DM will do. And then I'm going to roll some dice. Uh, Okay. You cast your mind out and you try to focus on Greece and you see the flash of his face. You try to pull up. You know he's coming up and out. And it almost feels like there's something guiding you, like pushing you to the right place. As for the first time, you cast your eyes... You're moving out of the lift entrance on level 59. And you can see here, there's the short corridor around this lift and the bars that come down where the barriers would look over to the atrium. The bars either side that block off the corridor. The bars all along the outside of this section. And you manage to make your way down, down another corridor, moving, shifting, It's like you're being guided to some degree, like you look one way and something snaps your attention the other. You hear people, footsteps, movement, and then you're looking out and you can see what the stairwell would be on this floor. The only way up, again, barred, so you can't go down. And you can see there are people People handing things through the bars, not from ISO 59 out, but from the outside in. Guns, weapons, some makeshift, just like the one that you took off of Slip. That one time when you were at the refuge was attacked for a bet. You can see there are people being ushered around You can see that there are what appear to be children being passed through these bars. Some of them crying. There are people there, not all with weapons, but begging for safety. Asking if the bars will keep them out. There is voices and you can't make them out. But four men, 
reasonably heavily armed, some of them having just received these guns. Elevator. Watch. Guarding. Atrium. Something about it. Something about the insight of those words that you can just pick up. They're moving. They're preparing. They're defending. They've heard. Something's happened. Perhaps there wasn't a lie about the gunfire and the explosions and the attacks. And suddenly you feel feel yourself pulled. No, driven past this at an accelerating pace as you lose track of the corridors that you have been forced to turn down in your mind's eye to a door. Battered. The door opens, the chain on the back keeping it from coming ajar. There's a voice. You're standing where a person is standing, talking to somebody behind this door. And something in your vision tries to push you through it. There's a name. And it's gone before you can recognise it. Before suddenly that presence that was pushing you forward is gone. And you are thrown back to those lift doors, to Grease's face as your eyes open. And you're standing back in the room and you're not tied and you can see the crossbar and the chair empty still in the center. Grease is making his way up to a level that is defending itself or preparing to for against whatever has been happening. Grease is walking in to a level, people armed with guns, All right, I reach out to him. Grease. You're walking into Damn a buzzsaw. Damn it, Triclops, what do you want? You're walking into a buzzsaw. You're going to get killed. We've got to put everyone together and take it together. There's too many. I've seen it. All right. Well, I'm not going to backtrack all this all this way, I need you to go, or, or, or uh, wait, you're psychic, why don't you just reach out to everybody and tell them to meet me here? I could do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, you didn't think, oh, I got this magical psychic power. Listen, wise ass, you're gonna get killed. So cut the shit, sit still, and let me call them the, the troops. Thank you. And I hang. Ah. Alright. <laughs> you don't hear the last bit as you break the psychic connection. You hear the dip and then it's gone. <laughs> you dick. <laughs> Reinholds. You feel that presence again. That was far more interesting, Reinhold. Well done. I really do prefer you. When you're interesting. And you can see the voice has changed. It's no longer that ominous, expectant voice. There is a an excitement about it. There's a life to it that it didn't have before. What do you do now? I'll show you interesting. I reach out to Talon. Talon. I need a voice thing like you've got, Zippy. I need the, I need the plug in. Yeah, show me how you do it. I'm uh, going to plug that uh, voice mod. There you go. Give me that. Uh, sounds just like him. Talon, 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 Talon. <laughs> and Judge Talon, you feel this prickle up the back of your neck. Like when you know somebody's watching you from behind or just a hair's breadth away. And you hear your voice being called in the back of your own mind. Stops, closes the door for a second. What? I'm stuck. I can't stop Grease from getting killed. He's walking into a buzzsaw. They know he's coming. They know we're all coming. They're pushing us They're... there. We're being hunted like sheep, but we're going anyways. They're armed and ready. 
There's women and children behind bars. There are a lot of them there up are... there behind bars. They're armed to the teeth. I'm going to try to get back, but I can't. No promises. I've got another side judge with me. Judge Fremont. Waits is incapacitated in the refuge. Do you trust Fremont? Yes. Don't be wrong. Reinhold. Ask about Judge Shea. Do I know Judge Shea? No. Who is Judge Shea? Uh, I think you would have known this because Greece would have come back with this information. But back when he met with the person that you all suspect might be running the anti-militia had uh -huh. two judge badges on his wall. Judge Caro uh, and Judge Shea. Yeah, yeah. The two judges okay. that were here before you. Right, right. All right. Ryan Held's having trouble remembering. The dead judges? I don't think she's dead. And I'm going to send him... I, Judge Talon doesn't know if this works or not, but in her head, she's picturing that video clip from the uh, face clinic of the woman with the uh, who brought her face and the hair with the blonde tips. And you see Do flashes see of this image in your mind. It's broken because the psychic connection is stronger for you putting it out than it is you giving it back, getting it back in. But there's flashes. It l reminds you of like dentistry except the stitches in the skin and you see the flash of hair as Talon tries to focus and that bit plays over and over as the camera pans as if it's been swung out of the way and you catch the bottom half of this face and this dark brown hair with the with the um, blonde tips to it. Shay. As I live and breathe. So, Thank you, Tam. She's got me. I don't know where I am. Somewhere below. But I'm coming we're back. We're locked and loaded, coming up. Don't get dead. I'll have soup for you. All right, then I leave. It's badass. Okay. Then I go. And you feel that presence fade, Talon. And Judge Ryan holds, you open your eyes again and you're still in the room, seemingly alone, except for your own burning rage and questions. A traitor judge. I love it. Shay. Where are you? Are you in the room? Am I in the room? I need to talk to you again, Shay. Maybe we'll talk. I think you should see more first. There's somebody that you should see. I wonder if you can find them. A man balding in a suit. A man who once visited a betting shop. I can't see him, but I think you can. Try and focus. You're interesting when you focus, Reinhold. And the voice goes quiet and nothing you say after that garners a response. You're just alone in this room. And we're going to cut to Judge Fremont and Judge Talon. What are you both doing right now? What is happening where you are and what are you doing next? Um, I think Judge Fremont's going to ask Judge Talon if she can patch her into the uh, intercom system. Yeah, piece of cake. And uh, 
Talon puts down the uh, chemicals that she's been mixing from the uh, <laughs> medical supply and uh, goes over to a, a keyboard access point and just patches, you know, type, 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 patches are in. Um, yeah. There you go. And then just right. turns around and goes right back to mixing chemicals. Yeah. Judge Fremont's going to do that really irritating thing of like having the feedback come in first. Get everyone's attention. You're standing a bit too close to like a mm -hmm. small speaker that's in here, as there's the horrible whine that makes your you know your yeah. spine tingle before it clears and you pull it away. All right, denizens of Freedom Falls, this is the Hall of Justice. In light of this great breach in law, Freedom Falls is now on lockdown. Stay in your quarters. Any resistance will be dealt with swiftly and lethally. And you and hear a click me. as the lawgiver <laughs> gets loaded again. And you can hear the click as well over the intercom system. And you can hear it echoing outside. Greece, you hear this echoing up from the floors adjacent to the lift shaft that you're in. Reinhold, you hear this. It's fainter, further away, but you can make out the words. This must be the Judge Fremont, because you don't recognise the voice. And I, and, and is it like coming from a certain place, uh, like above or behind, or like can I, or is it just sort of around? It's just kind of around. You can't tell if it's because there's something going on psychically. You've already shifted places in this room once, or whether it's just because it's so empty in here, the sound just bounces. So you can't pick up where it's coming from. But you can hear it, it's fainter. You're definitely further away from the atrium, further away from the center of the block, probably closer towards the outside. Uh, like the uh, closest to the outer walls somewhere than you are right in the center of everything. So, you know, being up against a powerful side judge, he's probably had some training or, you know, heads up as to what they're capable of. And so just doesn't believe anything that he's seeing. Uh, so in front of me is the chair and the bar and, mm -hmm. and all around is it's this wood uh, makeshift warehouse apartment area. Behind me is there the rough door window thing that I came through? Yeah. Mm. All right. Uh, I think it puts his hand on the crossbar and like pushes it. Does it feel real? Does do splinters come off the wood? As you step up to it, you put your hand on it and you push. And Judge Fremont's message is still going as she talks. Splinters come off the wood. It feels solid. You give it a shake. It's there. It's, it's physical. Like stamp the floor. Like just kind of look around me like if this is a this is a vision, if this is a construct, it's a damn good one. And so the the actual block was behind me, yeah. Uh, when I, because I like jumped off of it, uh, right? When I when I came in, you think so? I th I think so, right? Okay, so I'm gonna turn around and go out the door. The attempt to go out the door that's behind me. You turn around as as and you exit through the door. And you're in a corridor. Son of a bitch. Just like the corridors to the mega block. The hallway stretches out in front of you. And then it's to either side. You turn back behind you, the door is gone. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, 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 can I do one more sense psionics in, in 20 feet? In, uh, in all directions. Maybe I can reach out and see if I'm near Fremont, which is surely too much to hope. You try to put it out. No psionics. 
you focus harder, try and make sure, knowing that if this is a side judge, they could shield themselves potentially. Mm. And then there's a I'm just blip, gonna... oh, go ahead. Mm. blip off to the left. No, the right. The left. And as you open your eyes and look, just passing, just quick enough for you to see a bold headed man in a loose fitting suit crosses somewhere at the end of the corridor and disappears out of sight. Uh, do I still have my axe? Or what I thought was my axe? My am, am I yeah. armed? You still have your, your psychic axe. I take off at a brisk walk towards this bald this where this bald man passed. And so you do. Judge Fremont, your message has gone out, presumably received by the whole block unless mm -hmm. some of the speakers aren't working in areas, but if you look out of the, the refuge door, you do see a few people starting to move, make their way in homes. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is the plan? I'm going to say one more thing too. Yeah. Hopefully I can get them like rattle right them. And to the anti-militia, no guns, no washed out psychers will save you. For you, there'll be no mercy. There'll be no ISO cubes. Enjoy your last moments on Earth. We are coming for you. And then off. Okay, and you cut it off. What are you both doing? You know Judge Grease is making his way to ISO 59. Judge Reinhold is somewhere. Hmm. A talent has gotten into the weapons cat is opened up the weapons cache, has loaded all of the lawgivers um has at least two on her um in addition to her own um passes the others off to fremont um mm -hmm. once she's uh, finished uh with our chemistry lab um she'll hand off how, how many how many uh explosives do i have how many explosives do i have um, you've had a couple of hours at this point, so I'm going to say you have four bottles. They're not quite as big, or possibly quite as good as what you get with taking the time that you'd have at the, uh, the refuge. But they'll go boom. Uh, I pass uh, one off to Fremont, keep the other three. Mm. And, uh, just uh, make sure you stand back. It'll go five foot blast radius. Puts out a lot of heat. Oh, excellent. And uh, make sure that Horatio's gonna stay with the uh, with the people there in medical. And then secure it and say, well, shall we? Yes, let's find this jet grease and we will tear this area block by block until we find him, until we find Reinhold. Leg like day? Hmm? <laughs> Gonna be leg like day and start setting for the stairs. Okay, and you're heading up to ISO 59? I'm going to pass 59 and go um, up two levels to um, and step out on two levels higher. Okay, you start making your way up there. Grease, you are making your way up to level 59 still, I believe. Or are you waiting here? Um, he's going to climb up to the door of the, uh, elevator of ISO 59, and then he's just yeah. going to hang there until he hears that everyone's in place. Okay, and you do wait there. The doors to this section are closed, as it's those, those elevators with the kind of double door sets. So you have got cover. Nobody presumably knows that you're there. Judge Fremont, Judge Talon, you arrive a couple of floors above ISO 59. And as you go up the stairs and past it, you can see there are people at the stairs. There are people passing things through. There are mothers saying, please, please take my children through here. They're safe here. They, they can't get in here. And some of them turning to see you, they have hands on weapons, but nobody really draws. They're just passing things through. 
there's almost an uncaring if they're seen as long as the weapon gets to the other side. Judge Talon's going to establish his systems. You're safer, lower. Trust me. There's apples you, in 26. Hmm. And keeps going. <laughs> and one of them calls after. It, it can't be safer. Behind the bars are safer. I'm going behind those bars. There's just a there's a frightened look as they they don't know how to comprehend this. You know that nobody's really come in or out of ISO fifty nine except for children that are passed through one way or the other, either in the hopes of a better life outside of the level or to pass them back to family inside where they're make you know, they've got you know they have food and supplies and small industry within this level itself. And there's just a look of disbelief that anyone would say that they were going behind those bars. She's got talents, got, um, she just unholsters one lawmaster and says, you're going to be safer downstairs. And these few individuals go they don't say anything else they just kind of nod and disappear and you watch as they go you notice the tattoo on one of them a caged viper it's worrying when even one of the gangs a level so well protected it's literally behind bars feels the need to arm itself for protection you reach floor that uh a couple of floors above iso 59 and you can let judge greece know that you are here yeah. uh, just kind of um like a morse code on the door that would be heard in the elevator shaft i imagine there's just um, a kind of a, a banging yeah just bang uh talon just kind of bangs on the door um two levels up on the elevator door and something, Greece, something you... that Greece, oh, it, shaving a haircut. What the? What? I don't want a shave and a haircut. <laughs> Who, who's knocking? And then it clicks, Greece. Oh. You realize this is something that Talon has done before. This is. Mm. Talon knocking. Who's there? You have to climb up a couple of levels to get to those elevated doors that the knocking's coming from. But Talon, from behind those doors, you hear the who's there. Muffled by the metal. They shoot one of ours, we kill one of theirs. They brought a knife, we brought a gun. Yeah, that, that, that's generally how it works. Let's go make things go boom. Oh, heck yeah. I'm gonna go boom right through these doors right now. Everything's just gonna go. No, 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 not not these doors. I'm I'm talking about the oh. doors set to to them. All right, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go. Uh, uh, have fun storming the castle, and he like kind of like slides down. And, and uh, Fremont and Talon, you're a few levels above ISO fifty nine. How are you getting down there? Are you also going down the elevator shaft? Um, actually, was going to um, try and propel down from across uh, down from the. Uh, through the atrium, off down two floors from the railings, you, and then you know in. that you know that those are also barred. Oh, are they? Okay. Everything is 
is barred. Trying to get in and out of this level, as far as anyone has ever told you, is impossible. Service chef, then. Okay, you impossible easily... Is my name. You easily get these doors open between you and Fremont. And you can see Grease just below, clinging on with absolutely no effort to the elevated cables. And you both start to descend. And Judge Grease, you have Judge Talon and Judge Fremont descending above you until all of you can kind of get a footing on the edges of like the metal structure that makes up the elevator shaft holding on as you're outside the doors to ISO 59. The elevator doors shut. I reached in my pocket and had hand grease a, uh, a jar. You're handing oh, a jar good. of odd colored liquid. There's a few bits in it. It bubbles a little. Is this marmalade? Yeah. Oh boy, <laughs> I love marmalade. On one side of the bottle, you see scrawled in uh, marker, this side towards enemy. <laughs> <laughs> I, what do you I do take with it, the, uh, the jar and I throw it at the door. Okay, you take the jar, you throw it at the door. I'm going to need everybody in here. Uh, just make me an endurance test, please. Um, if anyone has got um, explosives as a skill, you can add this to it. But you are in a small space with a loud bang going off. Okay. All right. Twelve. I'm one of, yeah. I'm use one of my luck points for that. So that's endurance. Two d six to start. 20 for Talon. Cool. And then the one luck. 10. 10. Okay. Grease, you're lucky in that you take the bottle with your foot, cover your ears, and throw. And it hits the door. There's a bright flash which you will shield your eyes from. And Talon and Fremont, you have to sense even while holding onto this cable to kind of put your ear to your shoulder and cover it the best that you can. The explosion is loud, but having the sense to cover yourselves, it's not stunning to you. It's not disorientating and you're smart enough to shield your eyes from the blast. And when you look back, there is a quite significant hole in this door and you can see the metal itself on the raw edge is glowing slowly ebbing from a white hot um, as it cools mm. the paint burning and stripped away small wisps of smoke mm. let's not keep them waiting let's go talon screaming she's like yes and on the other side it takes you a moment to realize but as you look there are bars the same bars that you see and you can see that three of them it's not much room but you might be able to push through have burnt away in that center bit the rest of them still intact but tell them whatever you made burnt hot it's ah. just a shame that it wasn't you didn't have more to truly open this up um, Grease, you're able to slip straight in here because you were a lot smaller than Fremont and Talon. Um, but both Fremont and Talon, I will need you to make agility tests to try and squeeze through this small opening in the bars that you've luckily managed to destroy. Okay. 3d6. Ah, 10. Okay, it's a bit of a struggle with your judge uniform on. Greece has only got the, the shoulder pads on, but you're all in your gear as you try to go through. One of you might even have to like take off a utility belt undo a holster <clears> to try and get in without getting caught up. Um, you've probably torn a little bit of your uniform somewhere on the sharp raw edges of the metal or singed yourself a little bit on those raw burning edges. But you are standing in ISO 59 and you can see 
quite why it has the name that it has because it's just bars corridors it's like a maze network both the corridors either side end in bars with only corridors that head back behind you deeper into the sides of this block visible and even then looking down those hallways there are more bars in awkward places and you can see from where you are there are people the other side across the way people with guns people where they're pointed and you hear a few shots fired off you see the bullets ping off of the bars shooting into this place is difficult from a distance <clears throat> before you hear somebody call out they're judges they're, they're judges it, it's open it's open there are no more shots have... fired your way i had talent one dead. of the extra law masters or, I'm sorry, I hit Greece, one of the extra lawmasters. Lawgivers? Lawgivers. I was about to no. say, what is lawmaster? Oh, those are the sorry. motorcycles. My, my brain is like the. Uh... <laughs> yeah, I, I hit Greece, one of the extra um, lawgivers. Yeah. And I've still got one for Reinhold uh, on me. Okay. And you chuck that over to Greece. And you start to hear in the corridors there's more voices, they're shouting. The judges are here. It's open. The doors are open. And it echoes out across. And over the next few minutes, as you try to get your bearings, as you try to check, there's no more gunfire towards you. There's just the sound of people moving, doors opening, footsteps in halls. What are you doing? Stay in your quarters. This is a lockdown. Any of you step out, you will be shot. Now, no, no, we we don't shoot the innocents. They're like caged animals. We we need stay. to get them out. Okay. So, if we can, let's use this as opportunity to start an evacuation. Right, your way is fine. This will be an orderly evacuation, left side of the corridor only, single file. If I see anything of the ordinary, we will use force. And you shout this out, projecting your voice across here. And you don't know if anyone can even hear you over the shouts that are starting to happen. The sound of people moving. You can hear it in the corridors as it echoes. And within two three minutes there are people moving down the corridors people with kids uh, a few people that they have got the cage viper insignia there are old grandmothers grandfathers young teenagers and before you know it the corridors are filling with people to the stairs no higher than 26. don't stop till you get to 26. Go. We can't get out by the stairs. The, 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 this, this, and you can see that the people that have approached you, the first ones here, uh, accompanied by uh, a gentleman with quite a large kind of rifle that's kind of mishmashed together. No, no, no. You've opened the, sh you've opened the elevator doors. We can go through the elevator. We, we can leave. Let's, Stand let's by. leave. And I take the rifle from the gentleman, <laughs> hand it off to Fremont, and then go over and um, start filling with the, uh, I pull out my toolkit, and I'll call up the elevator. Okay. Um, make me a, this is going to be, uh, just make me a logic test. I just want to see how quickly you manage to do this. Okay. Because people are starting to build up in the corridors and it will get to the point where you won't be able to get through until they get out. Can I As... add the two six from my quick repair to this? Yes. All right. Nineteen. Nineteen. 
it's fairly easy. Um, you have to kind of put your hand through the bars to jimmy open the panel to the elevator. You don't have a lot of room to work, but you're used to this. And within moments, you've sparked it up. You've managed to bypass your own lockout. And before you, you know, put the panel back on and press the button, the elevator comes up. The inner doors open. There's still only that kind of uh, half a person-sized kind of gap to get through. But already people are like, it's open, it's open. And people are trying to rush. Whoa, whoa. Order. You will do this in an orderly fashion. Kids and mothers first. Go. And One as you give this... Car. As you give this order, you see a couple of um, young women, again, with the look that reminds you of some of the ones you've seen in the arcade, clearly part of the caged viper gang that are within here. And they kind of look hesitant to approach you at first until one of them says, no, no, she's she's the one that they told us about with the, with the soup downstairs. And you can see them chatting and one of them comes over, says, um, judge, and you can see she's like fiddling with her top, trying to hide that tattoo, that that gang marking. Like, we we can help. We we can we can organize people and, and get them out. Um, and maybe we could be rewarded with. I, I heard there was food on the other levels, and she's trying to cover it like she's nervous that you'll refuse if not. I. Uh I feel like Grease sees this, and he's like super on edge, so he takes the lawgiver, points it at this girl, and says, Show me your tattoo. Right now, or I'm gonna put a bullet in your skull. And you see she like, the rest of her body frozen in fear, she pulls up the top of her t-shirt, and it is the typical kind of caged viper um, on the top of the arm. Let me ask you something. You good with a gun? Uh, yeah, I, I I protect some of the 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 cinema, the factories. And she kind of corrects herself. I've there's never really been a big gun fight, but I I've hit targets well. I Do you know who out. I am? I'm Marlon Brando. Wait, are you serious? Word has not come come up here about the, the exploits of Marlon. I killed two rocket launchers. Two of them. Two of them. That bald little shit didn't put a bounty on my head yet. What the hell? Brando. Brando. Uh, Hold who on. Who are you talking about? Bold? The anti militia fuck. Baldy McGrumple Pants. I don't, don't remember his have, name. We don't have anti-militia here. This is Viper territory. Alright. Where's the anti-militia then? <laughs> the arcade and the, the levels above that, apparently. I don't I've never left. I've been trapped here since I was six. Uh Alright, look. All right. Just to evacuate him. I'm going up a level. I gotta go find this asshole. <laughs> Little Talia's chimp going... jumps over. You collect weapons. I want a stack of them right here. Nobody leaves this floor with a weapon. You hear me? You stack yes. these weapons. Yes. You go Judge. down to the arcade. You, you can go to 26. You can go down to the first floor to the shops. Tell them that Talon sent you. And everybody you... gets a meal. Everybody okay, gets start... a meal. Okay, uh, okay. And she starts calling people, and the other women with her start doing the same. And it's chaos for about five minutes, and then things get a bit more orderly as you try to make your way past this. Where are you both heading? To the anti-militia. So you're going to leave ISO fifty-nine and go up. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I imagine then that when that elevator goes down below, um, you make your way back up through the elevator shafts to the floor you were on before and can continue up with the stairs. And that's what you do yeah. past 
Level 70. Pass. And the elevator will go from uh, 59 to 26 to 1 and just those floors. It yeah, will not you can, stop anyone else. You can easily program that in. Reinhold, you're walking down this corridor, following after this man that you've seen flash out of the corner of your eye. Who is he, Reinhold? The voice in the back of your mind echoes again. Who is he? Find him. Find him! Be interesting. And there's a malice to this, an impatience, an anger. As it seems like you can see the man in the distance of this corridor as you shift and turn, but you can never quite catch up. But you can make out the dirty grey or black suit, the bald head. If you want me to find him, then let me out. I know I'm running around in your head. If you want me to find him, point me toward him. Oh, we're not in my head, Reinhold. No, 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 no. You find him. Maybe I'll let you out. Focus on him. Focus on him. Cast your mind out. Find him. All right. So it really pisses Reinhold off that she's probably that that he's going to follow her instructions because there's really just no options. Uh, can I cast my? Can I? Uh, I have like two things I want to do at once. First off, I want to run really fast. I want to do my adrenal dash, which gives me twice my speed, and so I just start like full tilt boogie running after where I saw this guy. He's got the axe in two hands, and he's running like a just a bat out of hell, fast as he can run towards this guy. And then uh, my uh, sense. My sense psionics and empathy are both no action is required. So I should okay. be able to do those things while I'm running like crazy. Okay. You take off in a charge running down this corridor. And finally, it looks like you're catching up with this man. But he doesn't turn to look. But you get there and you send out that wave as you try to look beyond yourself. You can feel a presence. There's that same calm but there's an agitation behind it like an anticipation but you don't feel the the presence of a psionic like you did before it's not that suffocating feeling it's like just on the fringes it's more like feeling psionic residue than it is an actual person and you charge up to this man and finally he turns and looks you in the face you see an older gentleman in this dirty grey black suit, bald head, and he's looking at you as if he's looking through you. Identify yourself. And suddenly he's talking. And he's looking down. And he looks up. And his mouth is moving as if he's having a conversation. But you can't hear the words. And suddenly, as he looks down again, you follow his eye line, and there is Greece. Not dressed as a judge. Waving a lawgiver around. Greece is saying something back to this man. And the two walk off together. Down the up corridor that's off to the right. And as you look around the corridor, they're gone. Who is he, Reinhold? Why Open you your me? mind's eye. Find him. See him. And I'll tell you who he is. All right. I just like hold out my hand, drop the axe on the floor, and sit down in the lotus position. Okay, the axe clatters to the floor and it rings out. You sit down. I 
reach out and I, I just do what I do when I meditate twice a day. Just completely stop, completely focus, and just try to forget everything around me. Purely concentrate. I'm going to go through my root chakras and I'm just going to try and push your mind guy. out. Okay, roll me a side check and add any skills that you think, like add a skill that you think might be relevant. So meditation, uh, telepathy, uh, clary sentience might even apply here. Which I do have. So so it's either or, or do they stack? Um, either or. Okay, so I'm going to do telepath of two. So six, seven, eight. So yes. Oh, hello, Fantasy Grounds. Watch as I roll four two times, because that's just what we're doing today. 15, 16, 18, 19, 20, 21, 25, 26, 27, 28. 28, yeah. You cast your mind out, and it takes a while. You're stressed, you're angry. It takes you a good 15, maybe 20 minutes to push those feelings out enough that you can expand your mind. And it's difficult because normally you start where you are and then you push it out through the walls, but you don't know where you are. So you try to bring yourself back to somewhere you know. You bring yourself back to the refuge in your mind's eye and move out from there. And it's difficult. And again, you get that feeling like there's something else here. Not quite in the driving seat, but something else looking through you. As you move around and suddenly your vision is pulled up. Like something is pushing you in that direction and you're up, you're on the arcade. You're in a rundown betting shop. You start moving through and your vision expands and suddenly you see things in a way you've never seen before. Like the walls are transparent, like nothing is quite fixed. Yeah, it's really trippy and suddenly you're in you're not in the driving seat anymore. You try to pull left, but something pulls you off to the side, up through the walls at impossible rates. And then there's an office. And on the back wall, two judge badges, Caro and Shay. The bold headed man is pacing the room. Looks like he's shouting looks like he's talking to people and the vision snaps violently as if it's fighting against you looking around and there are people here heavily armed people screaming shouting there's the sense of panic in this room and then your vision mm. That, that feeling of control is gone and suddenly you're in this room and everything's shifting as your mind's eye begins to kind of break down until you're sitting in blackness. And when you open up, you're sat on the floor in the corridor. And there's a strange difference. The axe is still there, but the corridor feels colder. The lighting's not quite as bright. There's a buzzing of electric cables that weren't there before. Well done. You want me to be Well done, Reinhold. You are certainly interesting. If you want me to be so interesting, let me out of this maze and I'll deal with it. And then I'll deal with you. You were never a prisoner, Reinhold. Not to me, anyway. Prisoner to your own conceptions and thoughts. Yes. But now I know. Now I know. Know what? Well, no, what do you know? I can see him now. Who, who, this other judge? Caro what do you is want? The other judge, Caro, he is dead. He was shot by another judge. 
At least I think he's dead. I can't see that far. But you have been useful, yes. <sighs> Perhaps that is where your friend is heading. Perhaps you should tell him. Floor 94. He's been there before, the penthouse. There's panic. They're planning something. It has been good to work through you, Judge Reinhold. But you are no prisoner. You have unshackled your mind. You're giving me a headache. And suddenly the presence is gone. You didn't even know there was one there so constantly, but there's an emptiness to this corridor. There's shouting coming from somewhere as it feels like all of your senses are rushing back in. There's people shouting, lots of shouting. There is sound. You look over and you're not far from a stairwell as you see people going past. Black uniforms. Lawgivers. Okay. I grab my axe and stand up and turn and head that way. You grab your axe, stand up and turn. You head that way. You push the door open. Judge Talon, Judge Fremont. You can hear, and Judge Grease as well, if you've all stuck together, a door somewhere in the stairwell below you that you've just passed swings open with force. And as you look down, there is a man, three eyes, standing with this strange axe made of warped and twisted metal, standing in the corridor looking around. And you see mm. Judge Reinhold. Judge Reinhold. I lean over the rail and I go, heads up! And I drop his uh, lawgiver to him. Can I catch it with my telekinesis? Yeah. I like grab it out of me. I can freely telekinetic move manipulate single objects of size small within five feet of me. And as soon as it like falls like right in front of me, I'm like, hold it with my mind and put it back in my uh, holster telekinetically and look up and shout Caro is dead Shay is the target Madness on 94 where are you going? Guess we're going to 94 Yes Let's deal with this Okay and you are all back together again and Reinhold, you don't really know how much time has passed. It's again one of those things that at the time you it like that it didn't occur to you, but now your senses are coming back. There's a sense of time passing as there's double. As Talon looks a little bit different, and as you check for a date, it's been a good week or so, or two even. You could have sworn it had only been a few days. So just like as you guys sort of, you know, see me approach or whatever, he's just got that kind of thousand yard stare of of someone who's been on Planet X for a little while and uh, is not happy about it. Glad to see you alive. How long was I out? Couple weeks. It's Judge Shea. Put me in a box. I've never been like that. Never been hit like that before for so long. She's strong. Here. I don't know where she is, but I'm gonna put an axe through that forehead. But first, Ooh. we got to deal with 94. It's a powder keg up there. Hmm. 59 is open. Waits is unavailable. 
locked in the refuge with Janna. They hit the arcade. They hit 26. They hit 25. Where's Tetley? With weights. Tetley's safe. Yes. Excellent. Hmm. We go up there. We defuse the bomb, figuratively speaking. And then we're tracking down Shay. And I get to finish her off. Yes. Fair enough. Uh, Reinhold, Judge Fremont, the one I told you about. Judge? I'll shield Gully. You're a benefit to the uh, division. Looks like you've kept yourself sharp despite the captivity. Oh, great. There's two mine, mine mages. Two and you should mine, And you should mind that, Judge Grease. <laughs> he clocks it. Kills mine. I've been undercover for a while now. You get in my head, I'm going to turn your head off. As if far as I'm concerned, your... Grease, you are barely a judge at this point. You have been fraternizing with the enemy repeatedly, and I am unconvinced that you are not benefiting from the circumstance in this block. And it is now that you will prove your loyalty to the law. Do you understand? No, I don't. Why don't you say it in a different language? You should see how many he blew up with those uh, rigged uh, lawgivers. Hmm. If I yeah. get in your head, Judge Grease, you will know it. And that gun is not going to stop you. Stop me. But I will stop you from stopping me from stopping you to stop me to stop stopping. Stop. Let's not deal with this and deal with the anti-militia. Then we'll deal with it. Right. She'll cock her gun. So, I got a couple pinkies. They, uh, they got their ear to the ground. It's going to be great. Okay, so we're going to go in there. We're going to hit them hard, hit them fast. You guys, you guys use your mind magic on them. Just be, you know what? If you see two rocket launchers, if you can possess their brain, because I know you psychos can do that, just possess their brain and point the, the you know, rocket launcher at the ground. Maybe they go flying or... You know what? Point it at the. You know what? If I, I had psychokinesis or psychokarotic, I you, the, you know the stuff that I would do. I um, Judge Fremont, while D Greece is saying this, just looks at Reinhold, and just like cocks an eyebrow, just like, and just like nods. Talon looks looks at Greece and goes, "Yeah, I saw that movie. I know it exactly what you do." Oh yeah. Wait, there's a movie where a chimp has psycho, psycho ca capacious powers? Yeah, like uh, Bedtime for Bonzo or something. Bedtime? That, now that's just a stereotypical name. That That is cultural appropriation. We do, we all of us are not named Bonzo, Pongo, and Bozo. I didn't okay? take this long Bonzo to make that joke. <laughs> I will have you know that my uncle Balthazar used to be in what used to be called a zoo that are now called isocubes. What That's do? what I'm trying to stop. I'm trying to stop this totalitarian bullshit. Just because they're they're innocent people doesn't mean everything they do against the, is against the law. You don't deserve to be caged up. So yeah, fuck your totalitarian law. I see what it is in action. Look at what it, it's got us. It's got us gangs and it's got people living in fear of us. We should be protecting them, not throwing them in cages. All right, Talent's save it for the city council. All right, right Putting hold. it in the corner of her mouth and lighting it. All right, right hold, Talon. Let's take out the trash upstairs. Enough of this. Okay, judges, where are you heading? 94. 94. 
94. I'm assuming that while I was briefly gone for that moment, Judge Reinhold explained who he'd seen. Uh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> More or less, yeah. Okay, Gre Greece, you definitely know who that is from the description then. The bald-headed man, the one who had you shoot Caro. Uh, in my defense, I only shot Caro so I could show uh, Baldy Mc, uh, Cranky Butt that uh, that I was I was cool, you know. I mean, he was probably gonna die anyways. And 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 he was already considered dead. And death is a popular reason for tax evasion. I saved him a lot of paperwork. you just imagine he's like oh great yeah i'm actually alive and it's like well you've been dead for so long here's back taxes 50 oh, shit, years I'm in the iso cube for for tax evasion that was last really? week wasn't yeah. it shit judge reinhold how long have you been stationed with this judge she'll she'll like not at greece oh oh too long and if i hadn't seen him <laughs> Uh, in our debrief, uh, when we got this assignment, I would have assumed that he fished his judge uniform and his lawmaster, uh, giver, whatever, out of the trash. So, here's the point. Grease, you shot Caro? Why? Because he was dirty? And the bald guy is the head of what? The animalitia? Wait, Caro was dirty? I just shot him because I didn't want bald guy to, to kill me. I was undercover. Sacrifices had to be made. Judge Reinhold, you have <laughs> what? the restraint. You know what? Of in the official thing. in the official report, we could say he's dirty. He was he was so dirty, like he had mud all over him. You know what I mean. You're playing dumb, and you're you're a triple agent, effectively, as far as I'm concerned. Triple. I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. If I you really shot a judge, far. if you really shot an active duty judge just to get in good with the mob, I'll throw you in the cubes myself. You I'm cannot to prove you, you what, just wait. Are they allowing psychic visions in evidence? Yes, they do. What? Yeah, they do Are you serious? Crack. Yes. Yeah, they do uh, a lot of shit don't go there, looking right? for anything else. Judge Reese, I would also take care of your initial surface thoughts. You project those rather loudly. What do you mean by it? You mean that I just hoop and holler? Your is brain is joke? like your mouth, Judge Grease. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Wait, oh, it's not a compliment. No, you're insane and you're dangerous. And if we didn't need uh, the muscle going upstairs, I, I would seriously cuff you <laughs> now, Grease. Well, if we flexes. needed muscle, we should have brought Horatio. <laughs> yeah, I'm the muscle. No, I'm. The, look. You're the brain. You're the brains. He's Thank the muscle. You. Talon's having another cigarette and walking upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> See, Talon and I, Talon and I have worked enough together that we know when one of us goes rogue. I could have killed you guys, but I didn't. All I would have had to do was rig the refuge to explode, and then I become the most dangerous man in this mega block. And then the anti militia would bow to me, but I didn't. Because I know where you guys are. I know all your codes. I'm the one who helped program that shit, man. You also all know he's not wrong. That is exactly what Judge Grease's job was before this assignment was fixing, programming, and repairing all of your equipment as it was handed in damaged. So next time this you is... take my loyalty in question, remember, 
I could have wiped you all out. <laughs> That's not good enough. The fact that you had a chance to murder all of us and didn't take it does not absolve you of killing a judge to get in good with the mob. He was Jeff already Fremont. considered dead. Just Fremont's gonna raise her law her lawgiver in the air and just let loose a, uh, a high ex. High ex. Okay. Him. You explode. There is a huge explosion above, and some of the like the concrete shatters, and there's dust. I imagine Talon is, you know, going up the stairs and suddenly grabs the banister, is like that slightly rocked. Both of you are deafened. I imagine Fremont is for a moment, but you're shouting anyway, and you know you can you, you have the psychic ability to kind of reach the surface mm -hmm. thoughts to get what people are getting at as your ears ring. Um, I don't know if you heard that, Clara, because you were off for a moment, but uh, Judge Fremont just let off a high explosive round <laughs> upwards. Talon just ah. stops, rolls her eyes, takes drag off the cigarette, looks at the butt, just drops it down the middle of the stairwell. And, ah, you uh, psychic psycho? She'll give you, like, this real, like, scary smile. She doesn't have, she has a really, like, unnerving smile she'll just walk up is it one of those smiles where it looks like it's it's a lot of effort to get it into that like a, it, it's like someone said this is what smiling looks like it's, it's one of those yeah it's just like <laughs> this is what people think this is a smile to make people off like calm it's like it's not that <laughs> Yeah. I'm I'm imagining that as you've been having this conversation, it's been like up up like one set of stairs onto the landing. <laughs> arguments move on a little bit. Arguments. Um, are you now? If unless there's anything else anyone wants to say to each other, we'll skip forward a little bit as you make your way up the stairs. Oh, um, I will pass out the uh, blockers and just say if me or Reinhold tells you to take these, take these. So block out the psychic. How do, how do I know it's not a cyanide pill? You better take it so I know that you're not trying to poison me. I can't take it because it, it dampens my abilities. Feel free not to take Grease. it. I'd like to see that. Chris, cyanide pills don't look like that. Oh. I made I, I made the cyanides. They, they don't look like that. Oh, okay. What, kind of, what flavor? Medicine. You know, fine. And he stuffs it in his pocket. You know, we can make those in butterscotch and strawberry now. You don't have to use the cough medicine flavor anymore. I mean, you guys keep skipping over banana. It didn't test well. Now, banana oh, yeah. nut bread, that was testing good. Ooh. The banana nut bread tested really good. That's the you know, Talon, you're making me hungry, and if you make me hungry before I go into battle, I I don't know how many casualties we're going to have. Because now I'm just thinking about that banana nut bread. Oh, I Damn it. Maybe they, maybe they have some up there. I'll bake Talon, some when we get done. Talon, roll me a, roll me a luck check. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, okay. Just banana just... bread inside the walls. <laughs> it's wall chicken. Wall chicken. Eight. This is Castlevania. Yeah. So um I imagine that Talon always has, you know, some soup or some food, a little pat lunch somewhere oh. in a pouch. Yeah. It dawns on you. You did make banana bread when you had the soup kitchen the other day. You made a small loaf and you pack some away. The intention of giving it to Judge Waits. And with the recent events you didn't get a chance. It's still there, wrapped in... I mean, this is 2000 Worlds of AD. I'm sure it's that there's some cling wrap that keeps food extra fresh yeah. or something. Oh, hang on a second. Taps out another cigarette, puts it in the corner of the mouth, unlit, and then starts rummaging through. Her uniform jacket has more pockets than our standard issue. Starts rummaging through, pulls one out. Oh, net it up, Brad. Tosses it over to Grace. Ooh. Ooh. Um, um. Ooh. Ooh. Um. <laughs> yeah. The banana, I mean, you were gone, and so the bananas started going soft, so I had to do something with them, so. Not, 
This is good. All right, let's go kill people. Okay. Okay, so I want to know what are you all doing as you go up to prepare for this? Is anyone checking for anything? Is anyone doing anything before you get to the kind of levels 80 plus? Otherwise, we're just going to skip straight there. I've got my gun back. I'm holding on to the axe. Um, yeah. I feel good Talon's about it. The, Talon's got the wrist rocket strapped to her wrist, um, ready to go. Double checks the bottles. Mm. Double checks her uh, lawgiver. Okay. I think Grease is fine. A few months good to go. So it's it's a climb, and you do see people coming down. You see members of the Wing Clipper clan, and you expected some resistance by now. But it seems that with everything going on, clearly the anti militia have been behind a lot. So much so, even the other gangs are not risking to put up a fight. They see you and it's not even they're running in case they get arrested. They just don't want to be in the area. With the fights that have happened in the arcade in the last day, with the attacks that have happened, word got round quickly. You make your way up these levels. Who? What? What's your kind of marching order as you go up here? I feel like Greece is the one in the front. I imagine you're like Pretty up on the banisters and yeah, just hopping from from railing to railing. Ah, you pinkies are so slow. Can I can I be in front of the group and just like under my breath be like, what "The hell is a pinky?" <laughs> we are hairless apes, pinkies. Ugh. God, he's tiresome. Talon's in the back smoking because everybody was giving her grief about the cigarette smoke. <laughs> I imagine at some point you've kind of had to stand on the edge and wait for everyone to go past and you're trying to yeah. make sure you keep the cigarette away from the bottles. Mm -hmm. um, so, Reinhold, are you up at the front then behind Grease? Yes. Okay. Judge Grease, Judge Reinhold, you look up and you can see by what's uh, painted on the walls. You are approaching level 82. Somewhere up above, you hear a sound, voices, and then there is something. It sounds like a trickle at first and you realise it's something on concrete. It's the noise that gets made when something drops down stairs. Tink, tink, tink. It's solid as it rolls. And suddenly you hear footsteps dashing away. Maybe one or two floors up. But I don't see it. Uh, I want both of you to make me... Um... I'm going to say agility, but you can use perception with this if you have it. Because it's more about how quickly you notice what's happening. Right. Just Freeman, just Talon, because you are further towards the back. You only hear this thing, but you're not in sight to see, potentially see what it is. Okay, so you want us to roll a what? Uh, agility with perception. Uh, yes, I can do that. Let me see. Uh, Judge Grease, because you are up at the front and you're on the actual banisters, hand to hand, you can have a bonus uh, d6. Okay. Um, for some reason, my sheet doesn't have perception in. What it, what derives perception? Uh, perception would be one of your skills. So it's agility. If you don't have perception as a skill, you're just rolling agility. Okay. Okay. Here, and I have a I have a question. Okay. So yep. with with the with the brilliant exploit, uh, my mind is honed sharp and analytical. Once per day, I may replace any other attribute check. Can I roll my sigh instead of my agility? Yes. God damn. All right. Plus, that's a that's uh, a twenty-four. That's a good roll. <laughs> Stand by. 
Four fives and a oh four. Look at all those ones. That's, that's the saddest shit I've ever seen. Four, <laughs> five, six, seven. Oh my god. Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. Reinhold, you hear it, and your immediate thought is weapon? But you can't confirm it. It could be anything. People have been seeing you and scarpering the entire way up these levels, trying to get out of the way. Perhaps somebody just dropped something. Judge Grease, you are in a position to see it because you are on the banisters. You see it trickle. Well, trickle. You see it plop down the stairs just ahead of you on that level and then come rolling past until it's almost level with you in front of Reinhold. And Reinhold, that is when you see it and you don't need a third eye to. There is a grenade that has been. I'm going to pick it up and throw it back up. I'm going to try to monkey scoop it. So I got these long ape arms that I'm going to try to scoop into my hand. And instead of just grabbing onto it, he's just going to scoop it and and follow through with like a toss up. Okay. Um, gonna... I'm going to say for this then, because this is all happening pretty quickly. I I want you to roll luck. Okay. And if you've got a skill that you think would help here... Explosives. Like you, sure, roll luck plus your explosives. And I am gonna this is gonna be contested. Eight. Oh, okay. You grab it, you scoop it up, and as you go to throw, you suddenly wonder if this is what a Marlon Brando special might feel like as the grenade goes off in your hand just as you let go. Uh, All I can think of is that moment in Jojo Rabbit. <laughs> I don't know who's seen that, but he throws a grenade, it bounces off of a tree, lands right next to him, and he just goes flying. Okay. You take 16 points of oh. damage. Ooh. Don't forget, you will okay. have, now don't forget, I'm down. You will have to no, yeah, I think you have some. You have some. You soak, should have some I'm soak. Gonna... Yeah, you soak it. I, I think, think it's like five. five. So I imagine, even though you're in your five. duster, I think before you've said that you've had your like, um, like the protective stuff underneath. Okay. So I if it's five you're... soak, so be eleven. Eleven. Okay, so that's I'm a down flat... it. You don't roll soak. No, I think it's uh, a flat score. I think it's a I think flat, it's flat score. It's a flat score. Yeah. yeah. I was just curious. Uh, that's, uh, that, that puts me at one. Oof. Oof. And Judge Reinhold, you watch as Grease is knocked backwards, losing his footing on the banister as he attempts to throw this explosive back to where it came. You see the flash and Grease go backwards. What are you doing? Because it's a long drop. You are yeah. 82 floors up. He's not a small object. Um, so, uh, I want to use a. I mean, can I can I reach him and grab him without having to dash? Is he within my ability to to reach over and and get him with both hands? Uh, I drop yeah, because you're kind you're kind of just behind him, but he's coming backwards, kind of in your direction. Um, make a. Cool. Uh, make an agility test. Oh, you look worried that. there. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's bad, because I did the substitution thing, which I could only do once, on the roll that I totally botched. So now I'm going to save Grease's life, maybe, on a... Okay, can I have a... Uh... Oh, no, there's nothing here. Uh, okay, what a bunch of shit. All right, two. Good luck, Grease. Here we go. <laughs> oh, no. What could go wrong? Everything. I'm thinking about the. You have an auto success, Judge Reinhold, on your do overlay. I? You do. My what now? Oh, looky there, I do. All right. So after chewing grease out for maybe being a double, triple, a double or triple agent, he did throw the grenade up, saving our lives. His, his too. But you know, in the heat of the moment, uh, I'll reach out and grab him and keep him from falling dozens of stories to his death 
Okay. I imagine that what you do is you go to grab with one hand and Grease doesn't fall backwards onto you. He falls that way and you lean over with both hands and grab him and Grease, in that moment as you're barely conscious, you see the side of the banister depart from you. And there's a moment where you're looking down and it's just that stretch of hallway. And as there's a moment where you think you're plummeting to your death, Something grabs you by the duster, hiking you quite violently, pulling you over. And as you're lifted up, you're greeted by the three eyes of Judge Reinhold. As your vision starts to kind of come back and your hearing comes back and everything hurts badly. Okay. What the f- Shut up and lie still. I do believe you owe him your life. Have we noticed we've noticed this by now? I saved him, you We're even It burns I So is it bad? <laughs> is it not too is bad, it bad? I feel like it's, it's really it's bad. bad. Just for once in your ape life, stop talking and hold I can't. still when i when i'm nervous i talk and i i put my hand over his mouth and do psychic healing which costs six and he gets 1d6 health back so let's try that and try not to roll a one for pete's sake hey Ooh, six Woo-hoo! Ooh, you take, you i'm in a seven health. okay you get That's... six back grace as the I... hand goes over your mouth and suddenly there's a weird thing where it feels like something in your mind there's like an intrusion but it you feel less weak and you look down at your your hands and there's burnt tufts of hair in places I... you might as well be a pinky as the I... hand that you picked the grenade up with is still a bloodied mess but no I, foul I all like, the way up to the elbow. I feel like this would cause uh, Grease to pass out momentarily. And Reinhold, you've got your hand over the mouth as Grease is talking, stops. You let go, and as he looks at his hand, you watch as he looks up at you and back down. And just, you're still kind of holding on to him and just goes limp in your hands. kept him from dying no more dead judges we leave him here and we keep moving he can make his way up if he is faster he may need the moment but we can't spare any time can we talon's been she's got a bottle loaded in her uh wrist rocket and she's been looking up looking for something to fire at ever since she realized what happened yeah and you recognize that explosive that is military grade it's not something they would have crafted it's perhaps something that has been stored perhaps something that once lived in the city defense many years ago you continue up um i i will say for the sake of this so that when zippy gets back in a moment he's not confused as to where he is you manage to kind of get grease semi-conscious and he's in that Mm -hmm. kind of state of shock looking at his now pinkied arm as you kind of have to help drag him up the stairs a little bit and shuffle him along Mm -hmm. but you make your way up a few more levels and you can see some of the doors here look like they've been barricaded from the inside certainly the level where that grenade came from but you continue up and talon you spot movement couple of levels up in this stairwell more voices do i have a a clear shot not quite you can make out perhaps like the top side of the face but not what they're doing there's somebody else up there but they're out of sight do i see how can we see how high they are um probably two to three kind of levels up like landings up on this stairwell Mm -hmm. Uh, 
Talon, I think, is going to try and sneak up quietly, move up the stairs quietly, staying out of their view until she can get a clear shot, and then she's going to launch Talon special at him. Okay, in which case, I want you to roll me. Uh, let me have a look at this. This is going to be um, agility with stealth, if you have it. No. So straight just a straight agility just a straight agility then and i am going to say this will be minus one d6 because there is a whole group of judges here and greece who i imagine is not necessarily the quietest at the minute in his state of slight shock and can i use a luck to make up for it yes you can all right 11. 11. Okay, you manage to go up using the change in shape of the stairs that goes up to shift your cover back and forth. And you peer around and you can see three people. Um, one of them, he is kind of hunched up against the stairwell, um, kind of looking down and you have to duck as he looks out, doing exactly what you're doing. It looks like he's taller than the other two, so he's having a more difficult time staying crouched where he is. They're all armed. Any of them bald? No. All right. She's going to launch the rocket up. She's going to aim and fire with her little bottle of uh, special stuff. Special stuff. You salt. make See that attack. All right. So you do. And that's. I'm using. My aim plus agility? Uh, yeah. I'd go okay. for that. Alrighty. And I'm gonna burn another luck on that. Just because I want to get, I really want to hit this guy. Or these three guys. Can 19. Roll our luck pool. The start of each day. So you'll get yours back technically tomorrow in game time, Reinhold. Um, let's see, you rolled 19. I'm going to say that that has... Yeah, that's going to hit their defense. Go ahead and roll your damage. They do have a little bit of soak. They've got this patched together armor. Alright, so 3d6. Eight. Eight. Uh, so they take six points. They are all clustered together. So all of them are going to take that. Oh, let me... There we go. There are my stat blocks in my notebook. Okay. Um, Judge Grease, you see Talon go ahead. You've kind of been dragged up the stairs by Reinhold as you've been looking at this completely hairless arm up to its elbow that you have and suddenly Talon goes up ahead and you're pushed against the wall and everyone's shushed you hear the faint sound of rubber creaking before there's a huge explosion a couple of floors up and you can hear the sounds of three people crying out I would like everybody to roll initiative nice uh, so this is an intuition check um, I have to roll for these guys. Where are they? You uh, get a whole thing on initiative checks. Give me just a second here, because I get... It's a whole 12. I get a Do permanent they have... one. Oh, Alan as well. Oh, well, that is a... That's a three. Ten. Ten. Cool. So has anybody got above 10? Yes. Uh, I yes. I got a 12. Talon got... So 12 for Reinhold. 11 for Reinhold. 11 for Reinhold, sorry. 11 for Reinhold. Um, Talon got 12. Wait, hold up. Double check. Yeah, Talon got 12. Um, what did you get, Grease? A 12. 12 as well. 
And three months? Ten. Ten, okay. Um, and then... Uh, seven was that one, and three is that one. Two, three. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to check I have the right number of people on this initiative list. So, top here is going to be Talon and um, Greece. Greece, what are you doing? You hear this explosion ripple off. You recognize the acrid smell of one of Talon's explosive bottles has gone off up there. Um, hmm. Is there anybody I can see? Uh, not at this moment. You can hear people screaming and shouting. You can smell the burning. Uh, Greece, I guess, will be just running up towards the, uh, the screaming. You've got a pretty fast, um, like, climb speed, right? Uh, I can climb my full speed because I'm a natural climber. Okay. In which case, I'll say it only takes you an action to climb up at least as far as where Talon is. So you do have a second action if you like. Here you can just see the tops of the heads and some of the shoulders of three people who appear to have some, pardon me, flames coming from them that they're patting out. One of them, you can see just the edge of what looks to be a gun as he's kind of putting it up and trying to look over and they're trying to both stay in um, cover while trying to find out where that's come from and get a sight on, who, on you presume, Talon. You hmm. still have another action. Uh, I think Grease is going to fire at one of the people trying to put the flames out. He's going to take his pistol, he's going to aim, and he's going to be like, pew! And try to snipe them with the pistol. Okay, go ahead and make that attack. All right, let's see. Um, that is agility plus pistols and roll an eleven. An eleven. Uh, that is just a miss. You okay. fire off the shot. And unfortunately, uh, this this guy kind of shifts, and the shoulder padding that he has, it's this kind of makeshift. It looks like it's been scrapped out of different bits of armor, and some of it perhaps just covered like rubber and metal. Um, you see it ping through there, and he flips back, gets behind cover. You see him clutch, but there's no shout of pain. You don't think it connected. Judge Talon, Judge Grease has let this shot off over your shoulder as these three men are trying to pat themselves down and get into cover. What are you doing here? Uh, her arm goes up at the same time and just after Grease fires, she fires and she's uh, got a little smile on her face. This is this is fire. And uh, she, um, she's going to use a... Uh, uh, an incendiary. Cool. Fire an okay. So agility plus pistols. Twelve. Twelve. Um, that also misses as the incendiary uh. round. It goes wide because there's. It's this moment of you want to chuck it, but you don't know what they've got you don't know what else they have and so it's almost like a blind instinctual fire as you try to catch the guy that Greece just missed the round clears wide and instead the stairwell just behind goes up in flames and you can feel the licks of heat but you can hear the panic as they do have to kind of step forward a little bit um is there anything else you want to do with your turn uh Judge Talon because you've got one more action left move up but stay within cover i mean they're as she's assuming that they're a little bit occupied right now so she's going to move up to the next um advantage point where she's got some cover but can kind of see them 
Sure, and you do. You move up and you're swapping sides to keep in that cover the disrupted line of sight. Judge Reinhold, what are you doing at this point? Greece has kind of shaken himself back to action and skipped up towards Talon. There's a huge, another explosion at the top. Do I see uh, from where, am I, I'm a level below, yes. Mm-hmm. Do I see any uh, uh, targets up there? Do I see the people who were on fire? Like, is there anybody I can see or do I need to move? Not from here. You'd kind of have to move up to where Talon was, which is just kind of up and round towards okay. the next landing. I do that. I'm going to move on up there. Okay. And uh, as soon as I see somebody, I'm just going to s- stop. You can see bits of people, shoulders, heads, as they're trying to move and get in position and get away from the flames. There's not a straight up clear shot in that sense. They're all disrupted line of lines of sight where you'd be pinpointing much smaller areas, but it is possible. So they're 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 wounded and rolling around. There's nobody like pointing a gun at me. They're not rolling around on the floor. It looks like some of them are like just putting out flames but there is movement because they've got a fire behind them but they're trying to stick behind what little cover they have of the concrete kind of sides of the stairwells okay i want to hit telekinetic shield gives me a plus three defense and uh i'm just gonna walk right up there and i've got my axe up and uh this is some shining shit i'm just gonna just go right at them and uh and just in just get up into melee okay so you summon this shield what does this look like is this just only something that you can see is it does it create a physical presence that's visible i'd like to see i'd like to think that you can't even you don't even really know that i did anything unless somebody throws a rock at me or tries to hit me or whatever but 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 uh in the telepathic spectrum uh, like maybe Fremont notices, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like the air I mean, pressure it... around me has changed. and Fremont, you do sense this, like the, the psionic energy in the air. Mm-hmm. It's almost like um, like an electricity to you. Mm-hmm. And you recognize what Reinhold has done. And you can almost see with with that strange vision that you have, that sense, it's like a sixth sense, that slight mm-hmm. shift and shimmer in the way something looks as Reinhold passes. And Reinhold, you do get up there. You make your way up the stairs. Talon, Reinhold steps past you with this axe, the one he came out of the door with and gets right up into these three guys who are up here. Um, up here now is Fremont and one of these guys. So just Fremont, what are you doing? Um, is, is Reinhold, um, in, um, arm's length of these guys? Yeah. Okay, I can kind of see where he is. I can see the stairwell right, clearly, right? Um, you can see up and round. You can't see them, and your view of those actual stairs that they're on is blocked by the, the concrete. But you know where Reinhold is, because Reinhold's quite tall, if I remember correctly. So you can pinpoint where he is. You can just see the top of his head over that kind of concrete um, like banister that goes up. Mm-hmm. So I have a vague idea where they are. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm going, and they're a floor down? A floor uh, they up? are a floor up, yeah. All right. Well, Judge Fremont's just going to look up in the direction that they're in. It's like, oh, he has them corralled. And then she will use telekinesis. She'll just like just make like this motion and and like point. And she's gonna send one of the bottles with um, Judge Talon special behind them on the other nice. side of Judge Reinhold. So it hits the the two in the back, but it won't hit the one in the front. Yeah, I don't want to hit Judge Reinhold even with the psych- even with the shield. Okay. These uh, specials are pretty nasty. Yeah. Don't forget, you also, uh, like Reinhold did, have an auto success as well. Mm-hmm. I think this should be. Fun. So Fremont and Talon both have one. I think the one okay. on Reinhold's overlay was used earlier. So. Okay. Um. 
So that's a um, it's a psychic plus telekinetic. Yeah. Okay. There it is. Plus one more. Oof. 22. Yeah. You flick as easy as anything this bottle and it goes in, like you kind of send it off and it goes into this perfect arc that even you, Talon, there's, there's a precision in it that literally looks as if someone is pulling it through the air and like slamming it down right in that spot. Judge Reinhold, you see this small glass vial with a strange colored liquid shatter behind the two men in the back. Go ahead and roll the damage for that, Judge Fremont. Is that 3d6? I mean, 3d6? Yeah, it's 3d6. Excellent. Seven. Seven. Nice. Um, that's going to be that one, that one, and it shatters. And again, there's already flames behind, which just add to that explosion of heat as the two backs of this men are now on fire as they're trying to put each other out and they're in chaos and the one at the front is distracted. However, one of these men, he's going to use an action to try and put himself out because this is pretty serious. I think you just hear like when that when she when she hears like the flames, you just to herself like no place to go. Um, he does not successfully manage to put himself out with that. Um, and in his panic, he is going to let off a shot. Um, let's who? see. Me? Well, let's see if he actually manages uh, 12. I have three judges in range. So let's go with... I'm like right up on him. This is the front guy. Okay, so you are... Um, okay, Fremont, you're one to two. Reinhold is... Three to four. Talon is five to six. Um, Judge Fremont does twelve. Oh, sorry. Judge Grease is one to two. I apologize. Judge Fremont is further down the stairs. Does twelve hit your range defense, Judge Grease? Uh, do you have to break it or make it? Uh, because mine is cool. twelve. It is twelve. That is a yeah. hit. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh. So. This is fine. um, Oh, that's weird. That's a weird effect. You can just see right through the... All the green screen. Oh, that's cool. Isn't that weird, right? That's inappropriate. Um, Oh, I just want to check. We have been reminded in chat that the retweet is at 15. Mm. Um... So is that a wild magic? Five more for a wild magic. Five more for a wild magic chat. Go ahead and retweet that. Um, Greece, you take. You've got soak right, which is five. I will assume. Five, six, seven, eight. So that is another seven points of damage that you're taking. You can, I think, use luck to negate some of that let me double check for you um you guys you guys managed to avoid so much combat in this game by all of the stuff that you do that these are rules i don't have to look at so often (laughs) i think it's it's a it's one it's like a die per luck die that i think you negate yeah um Let's see. Roll of luck. So you can absorb di- uh, absorb dice of damage on a one to one basis. So, for example, if this was two uh, d six plus, so you can absorb. If you spend two luck dice, you can absorb both those dice of damage. 
and take nothing. But that expends two luck that you won't get back until you've had a chance to kind of rest. So... Let me... Okay, so I'm taking seven. I'm soaking... Or... Okay, so... Hold on. Let me, let me look at this. There's 12. I'm soaking five. That's seven. And if I use my three luck dice that reduces it to four it'll be two luck dice i believe it just absorbs the the damage oh okay dice then yeah yeah it says absorbs dice of damage on a one-to-one -one basis so it's saying here that 2d6 plus three which should be fractional is 3d6 to absorb okay so i believe so you just I... if you so two luck dice will negate that okay then I will do that. I will go down to one luck dice. Okay. And luckily, as this stray round goes off, it catches you. And as you look, and it's kind of hard to tell because you ache from that explosion. And when you check, pulling up the shoulder pad, it's embedded into that. It looks like the bullet ricocheted off something, went in at an upwards angle instead of straight. And you have a slim, slim escape from being shot. Um, it is now over to uh, the other guy at the back who's going to try and put himself out. Fails miserably. He's going to keep trying. Oh, that's better. The other one towards the back manages to put himself out as he slams himself up against the concrete kind of trying to do a stop drop and roll um and he manages to get the flames out as he's now noticing reinhold here and is trying to shift round and the last one reinhold is the one up against you and this close range you can see that he's got this this gun out and he points it at you you recognize one of these guns. It's a lawgiver. Lawbringer. I'm so bad at the law. No, I was right. Lawgiver. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I how I managed like to get that. I get the lawmaster and the, and the lawbringers like, mixed up all the time. Um, so he is going to make an attack against you. Let me just bring his stats back up here. Uh, I've got so many page references written down here. <laughs> there we go. Um, Take a shot, cool breeze. <laughs> Sorry, my mum was saying good night. <laughs> um, that's good night, gonna be. <laughs> that is gonna be. Where is it? Oh, okay, that's not too bad. Plus that one. Does fourteen hit your range defense? All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I get the probably first off. All right, here we go. Range. So, oh, oh, he hits me by. Uh, I have a thirteen with my psychic. Should have set, spent that two power points, take that fourteen, but didn't. <laughs> so he hits me by one. Okay. Bastard. And you wonder for a moment, how did he get this lawgiver? And then you realize. The words Marlon Brando special come to mind. So we're going to roll a d6 and see what happens. Why is it always three? <laughs> okay. So. That is five points. And it comes with heat damage. It comes with the special um, of combust. So, um, you take the burning condition. Uh, which, oh, when I find it, burning. Sorry, I apologize. I am on, searching. On fire. 
if I'm on fire holding a bespoke axe that I made psychically getting into melee with an armed assailant, I mean, it's one of the cooler things I think that I've done in my year plus of streaming. I, I, I'm, I'm happy with this, even if I've got to take a incendiary yeah. bullet to the chest. <laughs> Right on looks like a nightmare. This is great. Okay, so what this means <laughs> is you are gonna take um one D six uh fire damage per round. What was the damage from the shot? Uh five. Woo! Okay. Do I take one D six now or next round? Um it says yeah, per round, foolish. it doesn't say on your next round, mm. so I imagine you take it now. I, I that is six. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> Woo! <gasps> okay. Oh. Damn. Luckily I can heal myself. Alright, cool. I'm at nine. Okay. I'm not afraid of these punks. Um, this guy does have a second action, though. Because <laughs> you get two actions in combat here. Is he a robot? Oh, fuck. Uh, 13, does that hit your range defense? My range defense is 13. What well, that's some shit, man. What, let's, I didn't... See what, ah! let's see what bullet this Marlon Brando fires. Oh, you might be alright here. So, this is... Uh, 2d6 plus 2, so that is oh 12, my. but it's halved because it's armor-piercing. So that is well, now, hold 6. Hold on, I didn't do my... Okay, go ahead. Hold on. <laughs> That is six points of damage, not including any, any soak that you might have. Okay, so let's talk about that really quick because I didn't do my soak to the last round. So let's just mm -hmm. just for a second. So let's so the previous thing he I took five and then he did six flame. Yeah. Okay, so does that mean I soak the front five? I would say yes. And then took six fire because it's one thing. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna heal. Five. Just yes. slightly on fire. Yeah. Okay. Which takes me back up to 14. And then mm -hmm. now I just took 10 minus uh, 5. So it'd be, tw uh, it'd be 12, half to 6. So minus 5, you take 1. Right? Ha! Because your soak is 5. Yes. There you go. Yes. Do not prematurely Wait. kill yourself, Judge Reinhold. <laughs> yeah, I'm, trying, I'm trying, to, trying to keep from just going right off a cliff and try to play this game. All right, here we go. So yes. Yay. I'm at 11. Okay. Okay. Uh, that is the that end fun. of his turn, as he looks quite pleased with himself. And we are back to the top of the round with Talon and Grease. Okay. Uh, how many people can I see? Uh, at this point, all three of them, probably. One of them is still on... One of them's still on fire. One of them is right up in front of Reinhardt. The other one has only just put himself out. I am going to fire the one right... Uh, fire at the one right in front of Reinhold. Okay. I have a question, Judge Reinhold. Your psychic shield, is that a like a physical thing that takes up space in front of you? Or is it more a thing that kind of flicks on as you're attacked? Does it specify or...? No. Uh, well, okay. I get a plus three defense from the shield until my next turn, which is now. Uh, cool. No, it does not specify whether it takes up... For all we know, it's like a coating over my body, I suppose. Okay, that's what I'm going to go with then. So yes, Grease, you can shoot. I just wanted to make sure it didn't do like a it's a force field in front of you thing, because that would be really unfortunate. <laughs> um, go ahead and make your attack. All right, so let's roll the beautiful uh, six dice. 22. That'll hit. That will definitely hit. And then 2d6 for damage. Uh, was it a standard round? Uh, yes. Uh, so 2d6 plus two. Okay. Um, 10. Ten. Okay. Uh, so that will be 
Cool. You take that shot and the standard round goes in one shoulder and you see it exit up and out through the back as the man stumbles backwards in pain. What are you doing with your second action? Gonna fire at him again. So I'm gonna uh, double tap him. 21. That will definitely also hit. (laughs) Uh, eight. Eight. Cool. Um, twelve. Okay. Yeah, he looks bad. You shoot him again and he kind of drops down out of your sight. But Reinhold, you see he's basically collapsed backwards against the wall. These bullet holes peppering both sides in one shoulder. Um, Judge Talon, what are you doing here? Pulling her boot knife and tossing it at, with the one guy going down to his knee, she's going to toss it at the one that's right behind him. Okay, so that's the guy who's kind of just put himself out against the wall. Yep. Go ahead. She's just going to throw that boot knife at him. All right. Uh, Taking the time to aim. I should have one more in there because I released that too soon. So a total yeah, of 19. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll for your damage on that. Okay. What is the damage for the knife? Uh, your boot knife will be... Uh, let me have a look here. Um, 2d6 plus 1. Alrighty. Five points of damage. Five points of damage. Uh, which one was that? Is this guy? Cool. Yeah, you throw the boot knife, and just as he steps forward, uh, it catches him across the side of the neck, tearing through the flesh and clattering behind him as he reaches up to grab it and put his hand on there. And he doesn't look so great. The color is starting to drain from his face. I'm, I'm going to want these back. Can I attack again with my second action? Um. Yeah, you can. She's going to pull the second boot knife that she took from the weapons cache and toss sure. that at him. And, and she does it. Go I'm going to want these back. Uh, that will also hit. Okay. Only three. Only three. Uh, You say only three, but he's really not good. As he puts his hand up, you again with your dead eye shot, you catch him through the hand he's using to hold onto this as he screams with his hand now kind of pinned, trying to pull it. Um, Just Reinhold, you are up next. And do you want to know something really scary? While having a look at weapon stuff um that armor piercing round should have ignored 10 soak i'm not gonna wreck on it because i don't think it's fair but that could have been really bad but i didn't realize so (laughs) but it is your turn and i'm gonna let you do whatever you need to do before i roll your 1d6 for let's just move forward stuff amicably (laughs) um so i'm gonna do am i within uh melee range of this uh the perp here yeah this guy is kind of not quite on the floor but like stumbled backwards trying to keep himself up against the wall with these two bullet wounds that grease has put in him is he armed um he's still like loosely holding this lawgiver okay and the one that talon just put two knives in is to to the side of me just behind this guy this guy's this guy was in front of you he's now off to your left as he staggered okay. backwards from the shot. Okay. But the guy staggered. with the two knives in his just behind him, just up the steps. Okay. Cool. So the guy in front of me, I'm gonna do but I don't have to move to get into melee with this guy, right? I can nope. just go ahead and Okay. So I'm gonna faint, which is identical to aim, but for melee combat, and I got a plus mm-hmm. six to my attack roll, which I have to take in the same turn. So first I'm gonna faint and and for that, you know when you're chopping wood? 
or when watch somebody chop wood. I personally haven't done a lot of wood chopping in my life, but that's not the point. The point is you do that thing where you drop it and you raise the axe way up over your head. Yeah. And then I'm just going to bring it right down on this poor bastard. And uh, that's my... What's a melee attack roll? Uh, um, I th believe for this it'd be strength. Strength plus whatever skill you have appropriate. If you've got blades, um, I'll let that apply. If you've got... Um, I'd even say to some degree clubs, because this isn't necessarily like a sharpened axe. Ooh. It's a it's a makeshift yep. thing that's been fashioned into the shape of an axe, but I don't think it's necessarily quite as razor sharp. Dude, I have clubs. This is awesome. All right, here we go. Go for it. So that's four. Oh, sweet. 10, 16, 17, 18. 18. That will hit. Yeah, buddy. Haga! That's my sound effect for bringing an axe down on a prone shithead. Uh, what's damage on an axe? Uh, oh, wait. I think I might have pulled that here. Maybe I, I have. I feel that. like it might have said on your thing, but if not, I can have a look for the next closest thing. Um. I pulled it, but I didn't. Let's see. Yes, battle axe damage is 3d6. There you go. Stand by. Uh -huh. Six. Six. Reinhold, tell me how you dispatch this man, because you also haven't yet sentenced him, which you know is protocol. You cannot just execute without a sentence. Oh shit! Can I, wait, can I? We can't. Oh, we. Oh, we took care of that. It's lockdown time. You didn't formally put anybody under. You still have to sentence him, though. You've put the threat out that violence will be met with the lethal stuff, but you still have to formally sentence him. And you would know this, okay. Judge Fremont. Okay. In that During moment. The like like during the faint when I'm you know bringing it up, you know, I could just like use that moment to be to like talk during it, you know, like uh, you have been found guilty of uh, uh, att uh, what att uh, attempting to murder an, uh, a judge. The punishment is death, and I bring the axe down like right into like his clavicle, short right area, and just put it like right there in the heart. Right there. There is a sickening crunch as the axe goes clean through, not because it's sharp, but for the sheer force. And you hear it hit the concrete beneath the body. Um, sure. Judge we'll Reinhold, on that one. you are still going to take some fire damage, which will be covered by your soak. So it's getting a little bit warm. Yeah. Apparently my um, eyebrows are gone, according to this book. Uh, so that's fun, and my clothes are ruined. But uh, really quick, I, want, I, sh I, I didn't deliver that right. The punishment is death. And I'm <laughs> I just wanted to do that. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> Take two. The sound tech in me can't help it. Um, then we have Fremont and the other guy um, who has currently got a knife in his neck. He was draining of color quite quickly as he can no longer even like he can't aim he's got his hand stuck up here um he's gonna spend his action to tr he's gonna try and move but i'm gonna make him roll for this because he's bleeding horribly he's barely able to stumble up the stairs and that's what he spends his actions doing is just trying to get away clutching at his neck with this knife sticking out of his hand and it is your turn judge fremont okay i I'm going to look at him in his direction and just under my breath just say, Agony. And I'm going to psychically attack him. And it's in that moment as he's like scrambling, he kind of looks around as if to look at what's going on and you catch his eyes. And he sees your lips move and there's a curious look. Go ahead and roll. All right. And then Oof. yeah that'll hit <laughs> okay let's 2d6 psychic 
nine psychic damage. Describe to me what happens to this man, just Fremont. Like, he just... He just... It's as if he's on fire. He just starts screaming, and then there's not, and then this just goes quiet. You all hear this deafening screaming that persists for maybe a few seconds. The muscles tense so badly that he actually dislodges the knife from his neck that's gone through his hand as he tenses, screams, and then just slumps down the steps, his body laying across your feet, Judge Reinhold. Um, Judge Fremont, is there anything you wish to do with your other action? There is still one guy here. Is he on fire is... or is he not on Um, I don't... Th uh, he is not the one on fire. The one on fire was the guy with the the knife. That's why he hadn't aimed, because he was trying to put himself out. Um, you know what? I'm just going to walk up there and just... Just take a regular shot at, at him. Go just around the it. corner. Okay, it's been a while since I took a sh gunshot. Alright, it's... Okay, five. That, that'll definitely hit. It's a regular shot. It's 2d6? Uh, 2d6 plus two. Ten. Nice. So you step over the body of the man that Reinhold is pulling the axe out of, and the man who died in agony at your word, and stepping over, you fire off the shot. And before there's even a moment for this man to open his mouth, to protest, to beg, you hear the sound echo out as the body slumps and hits the floor. You can hear shuffling and movement somewhere higher up. Shouts and calls and the sounds drifting further away. You get the feeling these three men are just the first of what was possibly an ambush point. You get the feeling that it's only going to get harder as you go up from here. Judge Reinhold is injured. Judge Grease is injured. But there's no turning back now. You've caught them, as it seems, on the back foot by acting swiftly. Judge Reinhold, you feel a familiar prickle in the back of your mind. There's no voice, but you get the feeling that perhaps there is a passenger, just like there was once before. Just that presence. Not nearly as intrusive as before. I think this is a good place to end for tonight. I didn't want to get too, too far ahead because we're going to have to have Judge Waits back um, for the finale next week where you finally get to face off against the gang that has truly been causing some issues. Um, wow, that was awesome. It's so good to have you all back in the same place. Um, I think, uh, I don't know if Will, who is wonderfully doing technology for us tonight, has got access to the law meter that Charlie puts up, but I am going to award you all a point of law, which I will note down. Um, and I think we need to do a Judge of the Week, I believe. If we are able to do that, pretty please, Will. Um, and have chat vote on which of our four judges should be receiving Judge of the Week this week. Uh, let's say one is Fremont, two is Talon, three is Greece, and four is Reinhold. Um, I think we can do that. We'll find out. If it doesn't pop up in chat in a couple of minutes, then I guess we'll just get people to type it in. I'll do a quick count as we're, we're chatting. Um, so let's go around and see what you thought. Tell us how your judges are feeling and let us know where we can find you. Uh, let's start with Shauna. God, it's so, uh, so good to be back with this. Um, this is honestly what Judge Fremont's used to. Just a lot of like mayhem running around with Judge Judy and all just tons. But yeah, um, I'm, uh, Shauna Flyingsters on Twitter, um, pin tweet. 
all my games I play throughout the week, as well as art, including some commit some new stuff that should be coming out fairly soon. I'm excited for the character pieces, so hopefully soon. And Zippy, how are we doing after tonight's session? I am doing great. I am uh, super excited for next episode, and uh, I'm willing to see where uh, this leads. Um, you can find me here on Twitch at uh, Zippy at the Zippy Zippo, uh, where we will be playing some fun games like Bard's Tale and uh, uh, what is that? Hello Neighbor, or whatever. That seems gonna be fun. So, yeah. Oh, it, me, it was uh, so. Sorry, it was so cool seeing seeing Greece earlier, like with Reinhold mm -hmm. in his in his moment of like even the law is a little bit wrong. Even we're not really doing what we should be doing. I've loved Greece's character progression in this, from like cheeky chimp judge to really like oddly a moral compass for the group to some degree. Sometimes a very skewed one, but. <laughs> yes it is uh i don't know i i feel like what would a uh a chimp be like if it could talk <laughs> a chimp doesn't want to be caged up it's been caged up all its life in zoos like i feel like next to talon greece is the one who kind of really understands some of the plight of these people in being underestimated or overlooked it's just, I love your character. He's great. <laughs> Thank you. Speaking of characters we love, Judge Reinhold, Travis, how was oh, that? Come on. No, uh, this was so, obviously this was badass. There's just some really cool storytelling uh, going on, and I feel very lucky to be part of it. Uh, Grease is a really terrific character, and the, the, how, uh, you know, diametrically opposed uh, our characters are is great. I, I One of my favorite things about getting to do these games um, and and cleric will tell you is uh, I love it. I love to get some intensity, and I love to really like lower my shoulders and really give somebody hell or get like kind of you know really focused and kind of get as scary as I can get. And I, I love that moment on the stairs where Fremont like starts to say something, and then I just started yelling at uh, at Greece and re really letting him have it. And and there's just this really great dynamic, and I love how Talon is like so much more dangerous now than she was at the beginning like she's deceptively dangerous she was cooking and kind of you know doing this you know this thing at the beginning everybody was like mm. and now she's throwing bombs and she's throwing knives and she's just a bad motherfucker and uh and i love how uh fremont is uh doing their job you know like kicking some ass and being a judge and and is now in that moment stuck between two characters who were really like whack and so I just have a blast with this. I'm producer Trav. Uh, Virginia's awesome, by the way, and kicking ass. I can't wait for next week. Um, I produce WebDM. Hey, on Wednesday we're gonna run a show. Next Wednesday we're gonna show on problem players, and uh, it's gonna be a pip. Uh, probably going to you know rub a few people a certain way. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm playing uh, teenagers. I didn't know morning. you were making a video about me. Oh, problem oh. players. <laughs> I, I, it's funny but like seriously though like your guy if we can take a second like because this happened zippy fuck shit up man i ran a one shot with this guy and he walked up to my key npc put a shotgun to his head and pulled the trigger i mean this guy you know you really go for it you're really getting in there and i love it man you've got your own you know totally unique approach to this and i it's it's badass it's really fun and um i so it's great I love the stuff that like Zippy improvises. Like when you showed up the other week with Horatio with this gorilla, and I was like, "Well, I guess this is happening now." <laughs> um, who I loved, by the way, Horatio is. We're bringing him back for the finale. And the wonderful, explosive cleric of Cord. <laughs> How was that tonight? Oh, that was awesome. That was so much fun. Yeah, Talon has a. Um very narrow subset of skills but she's very very good at what she can do what she does do um and that's cooking whether it's uh gastronomic chemistry or explosive chemistry she does have a bit of toxic toxicology in there as well 
and uh, she makes a hell of a bartender. Um, hi, I'm Kat. I'm at Clark of Court. I love this. Um, it's so good to have Reinhold back with us. Um, and I've missed him. Um, although I have to say his uh, psychotic episode was quite interesting, if you can call it that. Uh, Greece is definitely the word, um, always. And Fremont, I think Fre Fremont, Talon has really warmed up to Fremont. She, uh, faster than I think any of the other judges other than Greece. Just they, that laid back vibe of, yeah, it's good, it's good. I'm going to hurt you now a lot. Um, Talon gets that. <laughs> And I like that. I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow or tomorrow next week. Um, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, um, oh yeah, and y'all go follow Virginia at Tabletop Board. Then go follow her on Twitch at her channel and watch her play games because it's a lot of fun. And yeah, you, yeah, creative lady. That's yeah, that's her right there. Go follow her. Um, I'm a clerk of cord. You can follow me on the Twitters at the handle, um, playing games and uh, having fun. And let's see what happens. So, yes, hi, I am Virginia, and I'm kind of sad that this is we're going to be having the finale next week because I have loved every minute of running this game. Um, Definitely go and follow these wonderful people on Twitter. And if you haven't subbed to Encounter Roleplay, make sure you click that button. Um, if you've got a Twitch Prime subscription that you haven't used yet, please go ahead, click that button and support this amazing channel so they can keep allowing all of us wonderful people to come on here and enjoy roleplaying for all of you. Um, my name is Virginia and you can find me at Tabletop Horde over on Twitter and at twitch.tv slash Tabletop Horde. At the minute, I'm running some Fallout 1 over there. The next year, I'll be doing some one-shot streams from the collection of books behind me. And this weekend, I'm gonna start doing some previews of the first games that I'm gonna be doing in January, kind of showing them on camera, opening up, talking about them a bit. Um, I do a whole bunch of other stuff as well, streaming, but the most important thing is that all of you come back next week on Friday, the same time as usual, to see the finale episode. We should have Charlie back with Judge Waits where we can really find out if these judges can bring some true law to this mega block and really take down the anti-militia for good. And perhaps find out who this mysterious woman that has played Reinhold is. If you have any theories on who she might be, please, please, you know, put them up on Twitter and tag me in Encounter Roleplay because I'd love to see what people think. Um, looking at chat, it looks like Talon you have one judge of the week. Um, I'm going to allow you for this week, because I don't think there's any point in increasing stats now one day from the finale, but next week you get to introduce a narrative element to the scene, a significant one. At any point that you wish, you get to, I know we do a little bit of inventing narrative anyway, but you get to introduce something that turns the tables a little bit. So it can't give you like an auto win, but it can definitely move things in your favor. And that can be for you or for one of these other judges. It can even be in a scene that you're not in. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, once again, chat, thank you so much for joining us. Please come back and see us on um, next week for our finale. Don't forget to have a look at the monthly meat grinder that runs. Um, I'm sure there are some dates, but I don't know what they are off the top of my head because Charlie normally does this. But make sure you go onto the Council Roleplay Discord, where I believe um, some of the signing up for the monthly meat grinder is done. Chat has got a link in there. Um, definitely come and support Encounter Roleplay, hit that sub button, and if you're watching us on YouTube, hi, thank you so much, make sure you hit subscribe so you keep seeing when more awesome stuff comes out, and tune into all the wonderful other shows that go on and Encounter Roleplay this week, because everyone is awesome, and make sure you follow these people. Um, I think that is it, I can't remember if there's anything else Charlie normally does when she signs off. God, I can't wait to have my internet mum back, because she's so much better at this than me. But thank you so much. You have been amazing. And we will see you for the finale next week. 
Sign ups are open until the 22nd. And the meat grinder will run on the 30th. There's a uh, pinned message in the Discord, so go check it out. This is why Cleric is Judge of the Week. That way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a wonderful weekend. What is it we normally say? Don't roll too many nat 20s because we want to be there when you do. Opposite end of the spectrum. Opposite end of the spectrum. Oh, nat 1s. I work with a game where twenties are bad and ones are ones are good, so I'm not used to this. Don't <laughs> troll too many nat ones because we want to be there when you do. We'll see you later, everybody. 